Some promoters of raw food diets claim that the living enzymes in plant foods are necessary for human digestion and health. They also claim that your body has only a finite supply of digestive enzymes, so these enzymes from vegetables and fruit become more important as you age. They say that cooking denatures these live enzymes so that they cannot perform their function in the body. I would like to emphasize that only some raw food promoters make this claim. There are notable examples of those who will state that this claim is not true. They may be in the minority, however, of those who actually follow such a diet. Let's examine these claims. Do plant foods have enzymes? Yes. Are these plant enzymes active in human digestion? No. Plant enzymes are there for the plant to use. There is no evidence that they have any role whatsoever in human health other than to provide a source of amino acids. Does cooking denature these enzymes? Yes. They are protein based and heat application will denature the proteins. To denature a protein means to change its shape in such a way that it is not biologically active. What you may not know is that applying an acid to protein foods does much the same thing as heat. This means that these protein enzymes will become denatured in the harsh, acidic environment of the stomach. However, this does not affect their digestion as peptides and amino acids. In fact, as far as protein goes, cooking them makes them somewhat more bioavailable. This means that a larger percentage of the protein can be successfully broken down and absorbed. The myth that denaturing proteins is bad for human health is based on the idea that whole proteins are biologically active and can be absorbed by the body to perform certain roles as proteins, as opposed to being broken down into amino acids to be made into other proteins by the body. We'll examine this next. Can whole proteins be absorbed by the small intestine? Well, for the first few weeks after birth, a newborn small intestine absorbs a fairly good amount of intact proteins. For example, gamma globulin proteins present in mother's milk appear to be absorbed since the newborn has specific receptors for binding and transporting them. The stomach pH is lower so that pepsin is not as active and there are trypsin inhibitors, all of which helps keep the protein intact. This appears to be a way for the infant to receive active antibodies. Even so, we do not know how well this mechanism works in human infants. Only a very tiny amount of intact protein is absorbed by adults, and in certain people, some of these proteins result in anaphylactic or hypersensitivity reactions. Other proteins may have a small role in gut health. However, to exaggerate the importance of this is to exaggerate something we know very little about. For the most part, proteins are used to provide raw building blocks for your body to make its own proteins. We've seen that plant enzymes have no role in human digestion. What of the claim that your body has a limited amount of digestive enzymes and once the supply runs out, you're out of luck without an outside supply? Well, that's hogwash. The body continues to make digestive enzymes throughout life and secretes them as needed. First, let's define an enzyme. An enzyme is a protein that facilitates a chemical reaction without itself being changed by the reaction. Enzymes are known as catalysts. The digestive enzymes are large proteins that facilitate a chemical reaction known as hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the addition of water to break down a molecule into smaller pieces. This happens to proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, each of which have certain enzymes to hydrolyze them. Enzymes are, of course, not the only components of digestion, but our discussion will focus on them and not on the digestive process as a whole. Digestion begins in the mouth, and the salivary glands secrete the first enzyme called amylase. Amylase begins the process of breaking down complex carbohydrates called polysaccharides. These are mostly starches. The second enzyme is secreted in the stomach. It's called pepsin. Pepsin begins to break down proteins into peptides. From the stomach, the food enters the small intestine where a host of enzymes go to work. 
These are secreted from the pancreas and from the lining of the small intestine itself. The pancreatic enzymes start the process by breaking down macronutrients into smaller units and the small intestine enzymes finish the process by breaking them down even more. The pancreas secretes seven enzymes. This is not the only job of the pancreas, by the way. It also makes important hormones that are released into the circulatory system, such as insulin. The digestive enzymes, however, go into the small intestine. These break down proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. The small intestine enzymes are actually active in the lining itself, where the final process is carried out. One of these enzymes is maltase, which breaks down maltose to its final glucose form, and sucrase, breaking sucrose into glucose and fructose. Here is also lactase, which breaks down the natural sugar in milk called lactose. Now, you may have heard of lactose intolerance. Well, some people do not continue making enough lactase throughout their lives, and this enzyme deficiency causes them to have trouble digesting the milk sugar lactose. You may be interested to know, however, that it is very likely the normal way to be, and that the ability to continue producing a lot of lactase throughout life is a later mutation. This makes sense if you figure we were never really meant to continue needing it after we were weaned from mother's milk. I mention this because I do not wish it to be seen as ammo for the running out of enzyme claims. This concludes our coverage of the plant enzyme claim of the raw food diet movement. You can get further details in the article linked in the description below this video.